Arsenal have a chance to make history on Monday. If we score five goals or more, we'll set a record that's never been done in the top four tiers of English football. And that leaves us with a question. Why are we scoring more goals? Do we still need a striker? And if not, do we need to prioritise a winger? We're going to talk about that, but also there's some interesting news coming out about the Brazilian team, which affects us because England have a friendly coming up against Brazil. So who can we expect to play against each other? We know we've got Declan Rice and Bakayo Saka are probably going to be called up for England. So who got called up for Brazil and what matchups are we going to be able to see soon? But before we get into it, do me a quick favor. Just give me a thumbs up on this video. It helps the channel massively. So just very quickly, I want to touch on this article that I saw that come out today and it said, Mikel Arteta's men could become the first team in the top four tiers of English football to win three consecutive away games by five goals or more. The Gunners won 6-0 at West Ham, 5-0 at Burnley in their two Premier League games on the road during February and now stand on the brink of history. So all this suggests to me is that Arsenal are absolutely on the right path. So when you get like a chance to break these kind of records, for me, it's just confirmation that you're definitely heading in the right direction. If you're breaking records in terms of goal scoring that other teams haven't been able to do yet, that definitely tells you that you're doing something right. Mikel Arteta must look at that and think, yes, the project's working. The players must look at that and think, right, what this manager's implementing is definitely working. You know, an Arsenal breaking these kind of records seemed like almost impossible when Mikel Arteta first took over. Just remember the team Mikel Arteta took over and look what he's developed us into. We're not the finished article yet, but we're definitely heading in the right direction. The project for me is nearly complete. All we need to do is now focus on their more forward attacking areas and this Arsenal squad will be ready. We're almost ready now to win Premier League and Champions League titles, in my opinion. We'll see with the, with the Champions League when we do the return leg of the Porto game at the Emirates Stadium. But in terms of the Premier League, Arsenal are right in it. We were Manchester City's biggest contenders last season and I don't expect that to change this season. Let me know your thoughts on that article, basically. Do you think Arsenal will make history in that game on Monday. You know, and that does leave you with a question. Why are Arsenal all of a sudden scoring more goals? Is it just a confidence thing? In my opinion, that plays a massive factor. You know, when you're going through a patch of not being able to score, it's like, it's cyclical, isn't it? It's like a, a cycle that continues. If you can't score, it gets in your head and then all of a sudden you go on a dry patch. But when you start scoring goals and you know you're able to score goals, I think it rubs off not only on yourself, but on the other teammates as well. Arsenal have scored a crazy amount of goals recently and we know it's without a striker. So that poses the question, let me know, do Arsenal still need a striker? In my opinion, of course, you still go for the striker. But does that upset the balance? Does that allow the link-up play to not be as fluid because the striker will be more focused on just himself getting goals? If you bring in a 25-30 goal a season striker, is he going to have in his head that he just wants to score goals. He's not interested in the link-up play. If you give him the, the ball in the box, he's going to shoot. And so does that take away from Arsenal in terms of build-up play, in terms of playing it between the front four, Odegaard, Jesus, Saka, Martinelli, or Havertz, whoever is being played up top. But if you've got a striker, you're going to lose some of that link-up play because, you know, these, these, goal, these goal-hungry strikers, more often than not, are not going to give you the ball back. They're going to look to turn and shoot. Harry Kane, for example, he links up well when he drops in deep. But when he's in the box, you give Harry Kane the ball and he's going to try and craft an opportunity for himself. He's not going to be looking to play you back. He can give a little one-two in the box. Give, give the ball to a star striker in the box and he's going to be searching. He's going to be locked in, laser focused on the goal. So like I said, let me know your thoughts. Do you think if Arsenal bring in a striker, it would take away from that ability to be able to link up at the top? So if it's not a striker, what kind of profile of player do Arsenal need to be targeting? Now, there is one that we're being linked to heavily, and this player does suit the way we play, in my opinion, perfectly, and that is Pedro Neto. But do you go for Pedro Neto? I'm conflicted because I like the player, but I don't like the player's injury record. And do we need to be bringing in a player who's injury prone? When we're being hit with injuries so many times in a season and we're playing so many games, do you need to take a gamble on a player who is, let's be honest, injury prone? Now, you never know. These could just be unfortunate injuries. He could come to a to an Arsenal and then it could never happen again. And if that does happen, obviously you go for him. But is it worth taking the risk? That's what I want to know. Do you guys, if you're being asked right now, should we go and get Pedro Neto in the summer to try and integrate into this team? 
in like I said, in terms of play, he's perfect. But do you take a gamble on the injury record? Let me know. And if not Pedro Neto, who do you go for? And the second story I wanted to get into, for me, it's an interesting one because Brazil have released their, their team, who they've called up, and they've called up two Arsenal players and one's been left behind. What does that tell us? We'll get into that. But the first two players that have been called up is Gabriel Magalhaes and Gabriel Martinelli. You know, there, there was a time where Gabriel, the defender, was seen as rubbish by Brazil. And, and I think some Brazilian fans still hold that opinion, which to me is crazy. For, because for me, Gabriel is one of the most underrated centre-backs in world football. But for some reason in Brazil, they still hold him to that same standard that I associate with Gabriel sort of three seasons ago, where he's clumsy, makes mistakes, always giving away penalties and free kicks. And, and his distrib distribution isn't that great. Like, you go online and, and you see some Brazilian fans are shocked that Brazil called up Gabriel. And I don't understand it. Seriously, literally, go on Twitter and you search Gabriel's name. And some Brazilian fans, when you press translate, it's like, oh, why have we called up this calamity? Why have we called up Gabriel, the centre-back? He's always making mistakes. He's good, not good enough to wear a Bra Brazil shirt. To me, that's fascinating because I'm trying to think of a team that Gabriel, in terms of international football, wouldn't get into. And I, and I don't think there is one. He is a phenomenal centre-back who does so many good things. He can play out from the back. He can dominate airily, not only in his own box, but in opposition teams' boxes as well. And that showed with the amount of goals he's scoring. You know, Gabriel is on the same amount of goals this season for Arsenal as Gabriel Jesus. Now, Gabriel Jesus has missed a period of the season with injury, but he still played more than enough games to where he should be way ahead of Gabriel in the scoring charts. And, and is that the reason that Gabriel Jesus hasn't been called up to the Brazilian squad? Are Brazil looking at that and thinking, listen, this guy's not very prolific? We know for some reason... Brazil don't want Gabriel Jesus as their number nine. We saw in the World Cup that they would rather go for Richarlison up front than Gabriel Jesus, which is crazy because in my opinion, obviously, Gabriel Jesus is a, is a far better player than Richarlison. I know Richarlison's hit some form recently, but I still don't understand why Brazil wouldn't take Gabriel Jesus on these international friendly games. Maybe it is just because he's injured. But, you know, Brazil do have a tendency of not calling up every Arsenal player at the same time. Now, is that because Edu is friends with them? So he's saying, listen, this guy's just come back from injury. Maybe if you leave him at home and then when the actual tournaments come along, you can take him. I don't know. I want to hear people's opinions on this. Why do you think Gabriel Jesus has been left out of this Brazilian squad call up? And then Gabriel Martinelli as well. Obviously, he was going to get a call up. He's obviously one of the best wingers in the world, not even one of the best left wingers. But there is a problem with Brazil because they've obviously got Vinicius Jr. who plays on that left-hand side. So where do they play Gabriel Martinelli? They have played him before as a striker. Now, so many of us Arsenal fans have been calling for Mikel Arteta to employ that same tactic and play Gabriel Martinelli through the middle. Play him as a number nine. And that's what Brazil do. And the last time they done that, he scored in that position. So if Brazil do, well, when Brazil play England, I hope Gabriel Martinelli starts as a striker and people can finally see what Gabriel Martinelli does offer for a striker because he does so many good things that I think that position is perfect for him. I hope Gabriel Martinelli starts as striker and I hope Gabriel starts in that game as well. Obviously, it makes Brazil stronger. But I'm so interested to see how a Saka gets on when he's attacking a Gabriel, for example. Because not only does Saka know Gabriel, but Gabriel knows Saka. So who's going to be able to nullify the other with what knowledge they have of how the other person plays? To me, it would be fascinating. Declan Rice in central midfield playing against, you know, trying to defend at times against Gabriel Martinelli. Trying to defend at times on corners or whatever in duels against Gabriel. This is the most excited I've been for an international game in a very long time. And it's only a friendly. I mean, you don't often get to see four of our best players, two on each team, playing against each other in, in a football match. So, so to me, that's interesting. I'm definitely so excited for that game. So like I said, we're getting slowly closer to that game on Monday. So and I can't wait to watch the game across all of this weekend to see how the other teams get on in terms of our title rivals. I'll be keeping you updated on all the results. We'll be talking the title race in the coming days when we get them results in from the other fixtures. So make sure you're subscribed. And if you could, like I said, do me a favor, just hit like on this video. 
Thanks so much to everyone for watching and listening, and I'll speak to you all in tomorrow's video. Gooners, have a good day.